Good morning, everyone. This is Jenny Lyles. Welcome to Out of My Mind. Today's discussion is going to be on the core mindfulness skills called the what skills from Marsha Linehan's DBT skills training manual, second edition. Most of what I'm going to be saying is from pages 153 and 154, but I will be adding my own things to this in addition to what Dr. Linehan has to say. So, the what skills are the three core mindfulness skills from DBT that help you with what to do when your mind is out of control and you're struggling with being skillful enough to be productive with your day or at the very least stop being destructive with your day. Core mindfulness skills in DBT teach us to accept reality, to reduce our judgment of ourselves, other people, and the world, and to live in and be effective in the moment. DBT teaches you to practice the what skills one at a time, not two or three at the same time. We're going to typically encourage you to have a three to five minute practice at least once a day using one of these three skills. We're, what DBT hopes and what I hope is that mindfulness will become a lifestyle, a practice that you do every day and that you become more aware as you go, by, go about your daily life. The three core skills are observing, describing, and participating. Observing and describing are kind of building blocks to get to participating. Between the three, we are hoping that we lead you to a mindful participation in life. And so the what skills will encompass all three. Let's start first with observe. When you observe, you give attention to events, sensations, and feelings without necessarily trying to stop them when they become uncomfortable. Generally, you're going to want to step back from what's happening in order to observe it. I like to talk about watching these things go by on your mind like they're clouds or like you're going by in a car or since you might be able to hear it, a train because you can hear a train whistle if you're paying attention or like you are letting it go by like waves on the ocean. There's a difference between being angry and observing yourself be angry. There's a difference between observing yourself smelling things and smelling things. And that's what we're trying to learn here. One thing that observing can do for you is help you learn to stop automatically blocking or avoiding negative feelings and thoughts. And the reason we want to do this is that a lot of the pain that we have from negative thoughts and feelings comes from the blocking of it, comes from the fight that we're having with those feelings. Observing can also help you get to know yourself on a much deeper level. So here's some of the things you can do when you're observing. And I picked knitting to do as my activity today because it's a good example. Like I am observing the way that my fingers are moving while I knit. I am observing the feeling of my leather thimble on my thumb finger. I am observing that apparently I had a cross stitch at this point right here, which makes it harder to knit and that the yarn split as I tried to knit it. I am observing the nubbly feeling of the yarn in my hands. I am observing the last of the train whistle as it keeps going by me. I am observing the sound of my voice as I talk to you. I am observing how it looks in the camera while 
I think I'm observing my own feelings of self-judgment that this video isn't good enough. So you're going to do things like pay attention to your senses. So we're going to want to look at hot and cold. We're going to want to look at what you smell, what you see, what you taste, what you touch, what you hear. You're going to want to notice body sensations, again, like hot and cold, firm, soft, comfortable, uncomfortable, pain. You're going to want to simply notice those rather than resist those. Again, we're talking like we're watching these things go by, like clouds in the sky, like the scenery as you're a passenger in a car or a train or an airplane, or we are talking about it like they are waves going by us in the ocean. And we're trying not to try to stop them or catch them as they go by. The next thing we're going to do is I switch my knitting around to start from the other end. In case you're wondering what I'm knitting, I have my hair growing out and I need something to keep it out of my face. So I am knitting a headband that is long enough to double as a scarf because that's the way I roll. When you are observing things, you're going to want to do this for three minutes of your day. And you can either take time out of your day to observe while you're relaxing somewhere, or you can incorporate it into you, your day. You can observe while you're driving home. You can observe while you're doing the dishes or vacuuming. You can observe while you're in line at a grocery store. It doesn't really matter where you do these things, but you should do them for at least three minutes and allow your mind to completely get engaged in paying attention to what is happening inside you and around you without passing judgment, without trying to catch those thoughts. And if you find yourself with your mind wandering, that's fine. Just bring it back to attention. And if you have to do that multiple times in the three minutes, guess what? That's pretty normal. Okay, I've given you enough of what to do with observing. Let's talk now a little bit about describing. When you observe, you're largely not putting words to things. You're not really putting them in such a way that you're categorizing them or naming them. All you're doing is letting them float by you. When you describe, on the other hand, you're putting words to the things that you have observed. You're going to work to recognize the thoughts. Like, I struggle with the kind of math that I'm going to be taking in a test later. And we're also going to notice where those thoughts kind of go on to judgments that go, I'm going to fail at math or I'm bad at math. And we're going to try to distinguish between this description of a struggle we're feeling and a judgment about how we are. And we're going to try to avoid judgments as we describe. So again, we're going to be looking at thoughts, feelings, actions, the world around us, body sensations, all of those things as we describe. And you don't have to describe out loud. This is something you can do in your head. Or if you prefer, you can spend three minutes writing it down as fast as you want to or as slow as you want to. So you might say something like, I feel unloved right now. And you wouldn't say, I am unloved, because that's not necessarily a fact. That is a judgment. We might say something like, she raised her voice when she talked at me. Not she is angry at me because we don't know for sure whether she's angry or there was something else going on. We'll say the bus is late, not the bus will never get here. Again, because we can't predict the future, we're not going to make a judgment about the future. We're going to acknowledge our thoughts and feelings through words like I'm feeling sad, I'm hungry, I am enjoying doing my knitting. 
I am a little nervous about whether people will like this video. Call a thought a thought and a feeling a feeling. Let go of whether or not the thought or feeling is true. For right now, it just is. So you're going to spend three to five minutes in a described practice, looking through all your senses, feeling your body sensations, thinking your thoughts and feeling your emotions, and putting words on all of that. Like the yarn I'm using is single ply and multicolored in kind of an autumn palette called Vermont. The needles I'm using are pressed wood in multicolors. My hands are getting older. I don't paint my nails and I have an age spot at the base of my right thumb that is not going anywhere anytime soon. I have a blanket over my legs to give you a nice background that doesn't change much while I'm knitting and distract you. I can hear my computer whirring to the left of me and road sounds to the right. I am comfortably warm but not too warm. I can feel the air conditioning on but the temperature feels just about right for me. I can see the light from the morning sun and from the lights in my room in here. And I can feel the fabric of the yarn that I've created in between my hands with its nubbly, stretchy surface that I'm enjoying working with. So these are the descriptions we might put on a describe practice. If you'd like, you might want to pause this video at this moment and take a few moments to either practice observing or practice describing. And I'll still be here when you come back and you can just turn it back on and we can go on to participating. Are you ready? Okay. When you participate, you enter completely into an activity without being subconscious. So unlike observing and describing, when you step back from the world and you let a big space between you and the world around you, with participation, you're jumping into the world. You're, you're diving into that water smoothly and saying, you know what? It doesn't matter whether I know how to dive. I've got people to the side that can help me to the side that can help me if I struggle and I'll be okay. So when you participate, you're going to want to enter the task with attention. You're going to want to enter smoothly. Um, a good example is you might not know how to dance very well. But somebody asks you how to dance and you just look at them and you smile and you get up and you say, I don't know how, but it sounds like fun. And you get up and you dance. And if you are in a wheelchair or you use crutches or a walker, you say, I hope you don't mind that my wheelchair or my walker or my crutches are part of my dance. You may participate in washing the dishes rather than resisting washing the dishes. You would do it skillfully and willingly rather than mindlessly and unwillingly. You are trying to enter into the event rather than keeping separate from it. So you're going to try to let your intuition lead as you participate. When I first learned to knit, I bought a couple books. They were in the Stitch and Bitch collection, which by the way is wonderful. And the Stitch and Bitch collection has some wonderful line drawings in it, which helped me be able to see where the yarn goes so that I was a little better at dealing with it. So I would spend several hours over the period of about a week and I would knit a roll and I would hate the way it looked and I would undo it 
and I'd do it again, and I'd hate it the way it looked, and I'd maybe get three or four rows, and I'd hate the way they looked, and I'd take them down, or I'd get a couple of inches, and I'd hate the way it looked, and I'd take it down. Mostly in those days, I knitted an awful lot of rectangles. And now I have the skill to do much more complicated things. You may notice that this is the same yarn I made a sweater out of um, that has been in a couple of my videos. And when I knit, I do give a great deal of attention to what I'm doing because knitting is a fairly complicated motion of your hands. Another thing about participation is there's two categories of things you might participate in. One is that category of things that you're familiar with and you do fairly frequently, whether those are work things or home things, whether those are loan things or things that you do with other people. Those are things that you feel comfortable with already, like doing the dishes, like watching television. And yes, it is possible to mindfully participate in watching television because at that point you become very aware of your reaction to the things happening in the screen and you are not just absorbing what is happening in the screen. Another category of things you can participate in is the category of things that you are uncomfortable with, unfamiliar with, or that are totally new to you. So a couple of weeks ago in one of my videos, I had bought some watercolor brush pens and didn't know how to use them. So I spent the video simply practicing brush strokes with those watercolor brush pens. Turns out I prefer regular brushes to brush pens, but it was an interesting experience and I stretched myself and my ability to do art a little bit more. Nobody ever said I was an artist, but I do enjoy playing with art and therefore I do it. And that's one of my participations in life. Now, I'd like you to practice your what skills every day. Spend about three to five minutes observing or describing or participating. Incorporate your what skills into your day, daily routine. Don't keep your mindfulness separate from your life. It's most effective if it's a part of your life. Observe yourself, observe others, observe your environment through the day. Describe how you feel at key points during your day. Participate in the activities of the day that are a routine part of your life or that's something new and uncomfortable. You might want to observe your ride or drive to work or school. Observe the people or situation during a meeting or class. Describe your feeling after eating a meal. You might want to describe your feeling after an unpleasant or pleasant reaction, sorry, interaction with someone. Participate in doing the dishes or homework or a routine work task. Participate in doing something that is difficult or new to you. Get in the habit of looking for things to observe, describe, and participate in. Over time, you'll get better at distinguishing what you feel from what is fact, and you will find more enjoyment in everyday things, as well as less anxiety trying more difficult things. Now, here's the catch, guys. You will have to work at this. It is not automatic, and there will be times when it's difficult and frustrating some days. And I am going to do this last one because I just realized I forgot to add a stitch. Difficult and frustrating some days. Other days, it will be easy. Keep working at it, okay? And in exchange, I will keep working on putting out these videos that help you with various aspects of making your life something you want it to be. If you are enjoying my videos, you can see more videos at my YouTube channel or at www.oomm.live. The website also has articles associated with each of the videos within a few days after the video is finished. 
And all of my work is supported through my Patreon at patreon.com backslash J-L-I-L-E-S. And as you look at my Patreon membership levels, you'll notice that I offer things like life skills coaching in both groups and individual if you sign up at higher levels. At lower levels, I also offer a Discord server where we discuss the videos of the week once a week. And I also offer a free Facebook group to everybody, whether you're a participant or not, at Out of My Mind on Facebook. And it will have that little stick figure dude as the icon and as the header, so that's where you'll know you're in the right place. Thank you very much. I appreciate your attention. I hope you observed, described, and participated while you were watching this video. And I will see you again soon. Bye.